So here's your primary monitor. That's what I'm recording the primary monitor. And then here's me recording the, uh, the retro pie menu. My pie is actually over here and you can see my two HDMI outs. The one closest to the 3.5 audio is your marquee and then your primary display. I have it going into here. And when you click on a game, let's just load a game really quick. Metal Slug. You get your cool little loading video. It's loading. And then you got the actual game art there. So pretty cool. And that game art will just stay static like that while I play the game until I exit. And then it'll go back to that retro pie screen. Yes, this is not magic. It really exists. The Dynamic Duo producing a multi-display retro pie image. Not just any image, it's 128 gigabyte. Nicely loaded with the top 25 of most systems. And as you see, you have my primary display that looks normal, but in the lower right hand corner, I have a second monitor set up as a marquee, and it shows you what game you're in, or if you're in the main RetroPie menu here. So let's go ahead and dive into this image. But this new feature is a game changer for arcade cabinets and other builds. So these are the same people that brought you some really cool themes and these are the same people who have also brought you ocean blue as well and um, the sporting over 100 systems i'm sure it has a lot of good scripts there's the 128 gigabyte version so let's see if there's an all games the screen right now the second screen is just showing you that it's a retro pie we're in the main retro pie menu so i added the all games now uh where is it there we go. So this uh, 128 gigabyte is rocking a total of just shy of 1500 games, 1491. Favorites, none are set up yet. You can add your own. And uh, last played, Street Fighter 3 was the last played. Um, I'm sure this has other themes installed as well. CRT Blast, CRT Cab Blast, and CRT Neon. Let's go ahead and try Cab really quick. And a lot of my, I find a lot of comments like that Neon Tron look. Okay, so that's just a cabinet instead. Pretty cool, especially if you're using this for a bar top. And then, uh, cool. Uh, so you just get like the neon there. And then when obviously when you click into a game, that's also very different. And what do you have here? You have Amiga. You don't have any actually. Uh, arcade, you have 575. Not a huge arcade set, but good. You can definitely add on to that. Atari 2600, 25, 5200, So I wonder if these are just like the top 25. Yeah, these are pretty popular games. Atari Lynx 25. A Thomas Wave though, especially with the Raspberry Pi 4, I like this addition. A lot more people are adding this on as it's a nice welcomed change, especially for arcade cabinet as well. Coley Co 25, pretty standard. Dreamcast, 32, okay. So this is where a lot of that 128 uh, gigabyte, but look, fast loading video snaps. Gotta love the Raspberry Pi 4 compared to the three. Family computer, 25, disk system, 25, Game Gear, 25, Game Boy, 25, Advance, 25. So this is cool, they, they went with the top 25 approach. It's really cool. So it has the Macintosh emulator installed, Master System Mega Drive, 25. So you know the more popular games. Nintendo 64, 25 as well. Neo Naomi, 122. Wow. Quite a few here. Couple duplicate. Oh no, this is a different version of it. Okay, never mind. So a lot. So if you're playing those arcades, Neo Geo 25, your metal slugs. Nintendo top 25. Neo Geo Pocket 25. Uh, PC Engine CD ROM 25. PC Engine 25. PlayStation 50. Wow, it's quite a bit of PlayStation games. Cause you're curious what all is on there. I'll also go back to the Naomi. I've realized that a lot of you like to see what's on there. So nothing for Scum VM, Sega 32X, 32, Sega CD, probably 25 as well. Here's your 25. Super Famicom, 25. SG-1000, 25. Super Nintendo. Wow, it's got a lot of systems on here. <laughs> it's a nice start. It's actually a good idea if you want to stick to 128 but you want to also showcase as many systems as you can. 
I want to show you the Naomi collection. I know a lot of people might want to see that. We started to check it out, but quite a few gun, good games on there. Marvel vs. Capcom 2. So here's your primary monitor. That's what I'm recording the primary monitor. And then here's me recording the, uh, the retro pie menu. My pie is actually over here. And you can see my two HDMI outs. The one closest to the 3.5 audio is your marquee. And then your primary display, I have it going into here. And when you click on a game, let's just load a game really quick. Consoles. New York Geo. Let's try Metal Slug. You get your cool little loading video, it's loading, and then you got the actual game art there. So, pretty cool. And that game art will just stay static like that while I play the game until I exit. And then it'll go back to that retro pie screen. Blood's on. That was fun. Thank you. Thank you. Who is that guy? Is it the guy from Half Life? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this is running well. So let's now that we're in a track mode, as you see, this is a nested menu, meaning you have your main collections, you have you have sub menus. So this is your primary menu, and then you can go into arcade, and then it'll have your different arcade systems. Wow, they have a four player. So they actually have quite a bit of collections here. This looks really good, by the way. I highly recommend a track mode. It actually looks good, and it runs for some reason. This is running faster than the emulation station, like as far as the menu system. Um, beautiful beautiful stuff here um consoles so you'll be able to just like you saw earlier i can go into each console there's three sets of menus and then oh look at that pretty cool right 007 super mario brothers i believe you can use your triggers to jump letters and things on nintendo and remember so let's say i don't want to play consoles i want to go and play handhelds and then there's all my handheld systems and then uh collections so all your Sonic games, it should have like Dreamcast, Mega Drive, Neo Geo Pocket Color, Master System. You can see the different systems that the Sonic is for. So that's what collections are all about. And then options, what I like is that back in the day, a track mode was so bare bones and you needed a keyboard and a mouse. And so many of you are going to put this in an arcade cabinet. It'll still allow you to navigate and do a lot of these scripts while you have a joystick and buttons you know you don't need a keyboard um, it's a pain when you got to insert a keyboard and if you want to go back to emulation station you can do that here but i have to say on this particular image i'm way preferring a track mode i think it's gorgeous it's running great and this is going to give you a better experience if i had an arcade cabinet this was going in i definitely do that speaking of marvel vs capcom 2 I, I find the dreamcast version doesn't lag like you get a little bit of lag unless you overclock on the naomi version um, at least especially when I'm capturing it on a card for some reason I get better performance with the Dreamcast so I'm just gonna run it on the Dreamcast and there you go so the dual display here is showing um, you get a loading screen look at that little loading in video it's not just a picture it's a video and then you got the uh, the the second CRT setup Ooh, that dog. Ooh, missed him though.
All right, that's running good. really cool it shows you the cartridge the box that's awesome that's really cool All right, my final thoughts. Um, grab this image. It is awesome. They did a really great job on this. The one thing I need to figure out is why it's not using the full resolution of my monitor. I think there's something to do with the resolution, either the config file of the resolution, or maybe it's the two monitors communicating with each other. I'll have to check that out. It's not a huge deal. I'm still getting like 90% of my monitor. I just think that the res is not the 1080 by 1920. Um, so I'll just have to change that. It might even be in options here somewhere. I just have to have a look around. I just want to check out this image to get started with. But uh, all the emulators are working. It's a it's a you know recent version of RetroPie. It worked out of the box. It has a ton of games, a wide variety. I like that they chose the top 25. So like I was saying, if you actually go to the emulation station and then you go to there to the scripts, you know there's a lot of really great scripts like the swapping the uh, adding themes, the collections, uh, even has a dual monitor information to give you a little bit more <laughs> information, the bezel projects pre-installed, the background music scripts. Um, so some things that are gonna help a lot of newbies out that are added on as well. So um, those are definitely welcomed. So again, remember there is a uh, 64 gigabyte version of this and a 128 gigabyte version of it. Um, I'm, I imagine the 64 gigabyte, they're gonna take off some of the PlayStation, some of the Thomas Wave, maybe the Naomi, uh, maybe Dreamcast, because that's going to be the majority of the bulk of that data right there. Maybe the CD-ROMs here. Um, so it's just going to have a little bit less games. So functionality-wise and look-wise, it should be exactly the same. I do want to give a shout-out to the creators of this image. Uh, they did a phenomenal job, and it's great that they are excelling this scene. You know, it always seems like we hit a roadblock, and it's like, is this the end of retro gaming for the Raspberry Pi? Is this, you know, it? Is this the master image? And just like with coin ops and other things, you're never done, right? It just it can get better and better and better. And that's what's so cool about the community and everyone else. So big shout out to them. A plus all around. Um, you know, they really killed it on this one. They came out of left field with this new feature and uh, it's really cool. So that's what I think. Let me, let me know what you all think. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one.